Okay, we are publicly available for people to look at. <laughs> Hooray! And I'm about to start recording. Okay. Um, and it's fine, correct? Yes. All right. It is Wednesday, January 10th, 2018. Uh, and I am here with Lori Gill and Micah Sargent to start. Lori, how are you doing today? I'm doing okay. I stayed up really late last night and got up early this morning, so I'm a little tired. And the electric company is right outside my front door jackhammering. <laughs> and hopefully they've stopped for an hour so that we could do the <laughs> podcast and not make a mess. Your head hammering from staying up too late. <laughs> Undoubtedly watching Star Wars, right? Oh, yeah, Star Wars. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. That's definitely what I do when I stay up till four in the morning. <laughs> Uh, Micah, how about you? How are you doing today? Uh, not too terrible. I'm also, I guess we're all just exhausted is, uh, is the way it seems to be going uh, today. But uh, we're here and we are ready to talk about tech stuff, right? <laughs> Kinds of tech stuff. Fun, fun, fun. Uh, as uh, folks who are interested in technology above the average bear might know there's this tiny little tech show that <laughs> occupies most of our thinking space for the first couple weeks of January called CES or the Consumer Electronics Trade Show uh, and why we've while we three have uh, been spared the fun of going pause here I like CES CES is a monstrosity uh, and half of the products announced will never be available in the next 10 years. However, as a gadget nerd and as somebody who really appreciates Future World at Epcot, I feel like that is that is CES for me. Going to CES is just like being around Future World. And I'm like, yeah, that car with a hydrogen engine is not going to uh, be great anytime soon. <laughs> I... I I want to go uh, get a keyboard shaped like a waffle or a waffle shaped like a keyboard and ride around a driverless car and enjoy the nonsense that takes place every year in Las Vegas. Yeah. Some of the smaller things are the really fun ones. Um, when we were there last year, uh, the colleague, people who listen to the show have heard Chella on. Um, she and I had fun sort of checking out some of the stranger, uh, more random things. And one of my favorite moments last year was trying to convince this uh, gal who was running the uh, nail printer. It was literally like fingernail art and trying to convince her that I did indeed want to get a chihuahua printed onto my fingernail. Um, <laughs> and it was quite a quite a task because, as I said, it was uh, Chella and I. And so she was like, looking at my colleague who is a woman asking, are you sure you want to get it done and not her? And I'm like, no, no, I really do. She, we're going to put this on video and, and uh, Chella like bites her nails is what she had said. She's so it's <laughs> like, I had these nice nails that were perfect for doing this. And Chella was like, please don't let me do my nails. So anyway, ended up being able to convince the person that I did indeed, despite the fact that I am a man wanted to get this uh, Chihuahua printed on my nail. We got it done. There's a video of it. Um, I'll have to share that in the, the show notes. But uh, yeah, I think that's sometimes some of the weirder things that you come across, because that was like one of our last days there. And it was one of the most delightful things that we came across rather than some of the bigger, more uh, expected things, I guess. You can always expect TVs, but the smaller things are a lot of fun. So I've never had the privilege of attending the Consumer Electronics Show. This was going to be my first year and things happened, things changed and I didn't get to go. And I'm super bummed because I really want to go. I know it's a horror show. I know that people come home sick and exhausted and brain worn. I want to feel that. I want to go there and see the crazy <laughs> tech. I think it's super awesome. And I just want to see all that stuff it, like right in front of my face. I'm, I, I love it. I love it. I love all of it. I want to be bombarded with people trying to convince me that they're, they're, you know, 3D printer fingernail polish is what I need because that sounds so cool and crazy and fun and weird and I love all of that. So maybe next year they'll send me 
<laughs> yeah, me can you can take a take a conversation with Renee. See if we can do an I'm we'll do an I'm or meetup at CES. And that would be cry. so cool. That's all <laughs> I've ever wanted. Seriously, <laughs> buddy. <sighs> <laughs> But yeah, so despite all of the insanity that goes around CES, there's a lot about CES that really isn't important for the average tech crowd. Um, as I said before, a lot of it is vaporware, basically stuff that is proof of concept and may never come out in our lifetimes, let alone in the next year. Cool things, I think, for people who are tech enthusiasts that we might actually see come out this year. Um, and I want to talk about one that I'm really intrigued on, and I, I think we'll we'll talk about some HomeKit stuff after. But this thing for me that I'm really kind of curious about um, on a personal level is Libertone just came out with um, its first in-ear wireless option for headphones. And not only are they in-ear in that they're Bluetooth, they're like my Beats X and that they have a wired neck cord. Um, but the the new Track X or Track Plus rather um, is uh, not only a Bluetooth headset, but it's a sweat supposedly a sweat resistant Bluetooth headset. On there, their in ear wired Bluetooth headphones are pretty good, so I'm I'm really kind of curious to try those, and those are going to be out in the next few months, I believe. I think that is so brilliant. That's something that that not very many um headphone makers especially inner headphone makers are thinking about is um how many people are using these for for exercising and having something that's sweat resistant is such a brilliant idea you, there's a lot of of chatter about like having dirty grimy gross headphones how do you clean them things like that so it's really great to hear that that this is like a, a category that's being addressed so it's very smart on their part yeah, I mean, I've been reviewing workout headphones for the last year, pretty much, and uh, it's no secret that quite a lot of them are not great, uh, in including uh, people that we would expect really great things from, like Bose. Yeah, those are disappointing. So I'm <laughs> gonna hit this one out of the park, or if it's uh, or if it's just another kind of DOA headphone. Micah, let's talk about HomeKit because yeah. HomeKit is an area and home automation is a huge area where CES is actually releasing products that A, people might be able to buy soon, but also people might or might not want to buy. It, this is, it's interesting. Like if there's one regret that I have, because I've I've done CES twice, once with this company and once with a previous company. And it was it was it was an interesting experience the first year and then it was something to experience. But by the second year, you're like, okay, I know what this is and it's exhausting. And so I was happy to not have gone this year until I saw how much um, home automation, particularly home cut, home cut, no, home kit stuff uh, shipped this year. This is like the year of uh, home kit enabled products launching at CES. Um, and there are, there are quite a few things and, and um, some of the things that, uh, I want to talk about is something that Lori picked up on uh, pretty quickly, and that is uh, there are quite a few HomeKit enabled switches. They're they're remotes, they're controllers. They have different names, but in um, in actual HomeKit parlance, they're switches. And essentially, what you're able to do, and I've talked about uh, the Logitech Pop smart switch before, uh, and then also the fact that Philips Hue was updated to offer the same sort of functionality. Essentially, what you can do is tie different scenes or different actions or different pop products to the buttons that are on whatever controller you might have. Um, ones that choose to just be a one button setup, they're, they're gestural. So it's one tap, two taps, and then long tap or long press. Um, and then some that feature more buttons, like the ridiculous one from uh, the company that makes your light panels. It's name is Nan Nanoleaf. Yeah, Nanoleaf has this like, is it like 15 buttons or something? It's 12. It's 12 a do buttons. dodecahedron. <laughs> oh, ridiculous, but it's like light up. It's pretty cool. Uh, you got to, usually they say like seven, seven things are easy for the brain to remember and more than that and sort of compartmentalizing gets a little bit tricky so if you can remember all 12 of your different uh scenes or or setups that's uh pretty impressive well, so i guess I'll it's a nice sure little memory you know, test because i plan on getting one of those oh, snap well i'm looking I'm forward so to hearing excited. what you think about. pretty cool no they're you know what it's a really cool idea 12 may be a little bit 
too many scenes, as you mentioned, to keep in the brain. But I do like the idea of incorporating a remote or a button or a switch, something that also looks interesting as art. It's what I mm -hmm. like about Nano Leafs panels in the first place. It's like I have this fun little design in the back of my studio here. That would be a lot of it would be a lot less boring if it were just squares. Right. Yeah. 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 The, the yeah, ability love, to decorate is nice. Yeah. I love the idea that I mean, as soon as I saw that, I thought I this is like, you know, Blade Runner right here. This little thing that's like a polyhedron that you just, you know, tap and swipe and oh, it's, it's so exciting looking. It's way more interesting looking than the other um, physical remotes that we've seen. Not that those aren't cool and are probably more useful. I just love the way that looks. I want that sitting on my coffee table so that when people come in, they immediately go, what's that? And, and then like, I can watch. show off my lights. <laughs> You're like a, a, a fortune teller or something with your crystal ball. It's pretty neat. And I think, um, you know, one of the things when I've talked about these products in particular, these these controllers, uh, which, by the way, we'll link to an article on iMore that sort of breaks down some of the ones that have been announced, uh, or at least some of the more important ones. Um, the, the problem with home automation technology the, the one that I see sort of at the forefront is buy-in from the less than techie crowd. It's sort of difficult to get people on board with your smart home. In, in particular, if you're like, if you live with other people or one other person or roommates or what have you, um, if not everybody is on board with the techie stuff, it can be kind of difficult to integrate that and say, hey, by the way, I need you to not flip those switches anymore. You actually have to use your voice now. It's, it's, it's a little silly. And um, over time, I have mostly switched, instead of having uh, Wi-Fi controlled light bulbs and things like that, if you make the actual switch itself, the Wi-Fi controlled system, it's a little bit easier because there's still physical controls there. So people can still use them in the typical ways. Then you also are able to do your fun techie stuff where you can you know, use your voice and things like that. Well, with these remotes, it sort of bridges the gap. If you don't want to pay the extra money or do the extra work that's required to uh, you know, flip the breaker and go in and shut off, uh, or, or rather un unwire things and rewire things, which is stuff that I really enjoy doing. But if you'd rather skip those steps, um, these, these switches can sort of fill in the blanks. And so when you have somebody over, uh, or you have somebody house sitting, or you have roommates who don't really care about all the fancy light stuff, <laughs> then you can use these, these remotes to uh, fill in the gaps there. So everybody sort of gets what they want and everybody can feel comfortable with that. So it, that's why I think that this is one of the most important products that um, it exists in the home automation space uh, because it's one that I think will open up the door for more people to jump on board. Yeah, I completely agree. There, there's a uh... The fact that you know you and I might be super into tech and super into having our lights that we can turn on and off using our phones or our voice, our significant others, mine in particular, just rolls his eyes at the whole concept and like, <laughs> why can't I just turn the light on and off? So this is a really great in between because it kind of it gives those people who are really in into tech and future things the chance to play with these fun new gadgets while allowing those curmudgeons, I hope he's listening, <laughs> <laughs> to uh, kind of stay in their comfortable space of, of just using physical switches. So it's, I think it's, a, like you said, Mike, it's a really great way to bridge that gap between non-tech and tech for sure. Yeah, and speaking of uh, HomeKit products that bridge the gap between tech and non-tech, Philips Hue is doing some interesting new stuff too, mm -hmm. isn't that right? Yeah, th this is really interesting. Um, they are opening up a whole new, uh, if you have the Philips Hue app, um, I think the update rolled out last night. Uh, that's whenever I saw it hit. Um, and you might get a bridge update, you might get a few updates. But um, essentially what it does is they the company is partnering with entertainment companies and uh, other technology makers to create entertainment spaces within your home. So if you can imagine, um, in a living room, uh, people who have surround sound system set up, they typically have a speaker behind them on one side, a speaker behind them on the other. They may have uh, a big speaker and a subwoofer right in front, and then maybe some other speakers on the left and right in front of them. Uh, and then maybe more, but let's just stick with that basic one for now. Um, 
Think of that, but with lighting. So you have a Philips Hue color bulb to the left and right of you behind you. You have a Philips Hue light strip behind the television and then two Philips Hue Go, Go lamps on the left and right of the television screen. Uh, in the app, you go through and you set up your system and you say, hey, this is exactly where these lights are. This is where this goes. This is where these go. And then it sort of runs you through this little process where you can test to make sure that you have it set up correctly. From there, it will actually sync um, to the the lights any sort of uh, any sort of entertainment or or whatever you happen to be doing. And th this is where it gets a little weird. Philips wants to make sure that this is the best possible experience. If you were watching a show and the screen, you know, you you go to a very verdant uh, field and then you cut to I don't know lava. It doesn't want to be green whenever the lava hits. It wants to be red when the lava hits. And when things are panning up the screen, it wants to change those colors correctly. So it's not doing some sort of like have a camera behind you that's watching the television and trying to update those things. It is partnering with companies to integrate at the base level to make sure that these experiences are awesome. One of the first companies that it's integrating with is Razer, which makes gaming accessories and LED lights and keyboards and things like that which will tie those experiences together. But some of the more cool ones are upcoming partnerships. There's uh, on Twitter, there's been a, a video that's been going around that shows Coco. Uh, it's like a music video from Coco and the television and, and what's playing on the, the actual television is linked up to the Philips Hue lights. And actually as something sort of pans up on the screen, the color not only shifts, but it shifts in a way that matches the way that the, the screen is moving. So as the color rises on the screen, the color around the television rises as well. That it's, sounds so cool. It's astounding. And that's why I'm so glad that Philips is choosing to do it this way, as opposed to any sort of play around, mess around type deal. These, these custom scripts are being built like in partnership with these companies to make sure that the linking happens uh, on that level. And so it's going to take a little while for these different companies to roll out with their integrations. Um, but you can check uh, if you go into the Philips Hue app, I'm going to pop in here right now, just for people who already have it set up. Um, you go into the Philips Hue app and you tap on um, settings and you will see after you've updated, you'll see something called entertainment areas. That's where you can go through and set up your entertainment area. But then after that, you tap the explore button at the bottom and you go to Hue Entertainment. And right now you'll see partners. And again, the one partner right now is Razor. But uh, we'll start to see more pop up there. And I'm looking forward to seeing what gets added so that there are things that I can take advantage of because I don't have a cool Razor keyboard. But uh, yeah, I, uh... pretty neat. I use the Sync My Lights. It's a friend of Hue app that you can download from the App Store. Mm -hmm. It the it's pretty cool because you I mean I I use it all the time when I watch movies and it just changes the lights based on the color that's on the screen. It's not always perfect, but when it does happen, it's pretty awesome. But you have to have um your your device camera facing the screen because it's capturing the color that's coming from the screen. So I always have to have my phone set up or, you know, I, I actually use an, an iPad and I just set it up so that the camera is looking at the screen that, you know, that's a battery um, consumer and it's not always perfect. So I love the idea that Philips is kind of like directly partnering to get a better experience because <clears throat> believe me, it's super fun to use just sync my lights, but it'll be even better when Hugh is making it sort of perfect. And um, I, yeah, I really am looking forward to that. And I had never thought about this before gaming with your Philip mm -hmm. Hugh lights, changing colors. I usually, I use it with movies, but I'm just thinking about how much fun that's going to be. As soon as the night, it's like tonight, I'm going to start playing some of my video games on my, <laughs> on my TV with the Philip Hugh lights in the background, just to see what that's like. Cause I bet that's super fun. I've enjoyed Overwatch. the, oh yeah, can you imagine? I've enjoyed mm -hmm. the apps that tie into your Spotify or Apple Music library um, and just sort of having an in-house dance party is is pretty fun. Um, but again, those do sometimes have a delay. Now, uh, in the first half of this year, he, Philips is going to be shipping a piece of software called Hue Sync that you can get for your PC or your Mac. and essentially what you're going to be able to do is tie the, that, the color like to your screen. So if you're doing like a PowerPoint presentation, uh, then it will work with that. If you're watching stuff on your television, then it'll work with that. Essentially, whatever you want to um, want to do, Hue Sync is going to help add the color to that. So I actually have already built my entertainment zone 
in my office because I have two color lights behind me and then a uh, Philips Hue light strip in front of me. And I might get some of those Hue Go lamps to add even more. And so I'm looking forward to Hue Sync shipping uh, later this year so that we can see uh, how exactly this all works. And um, again, one of the neat things about this is how um, you, when you go into the app to do the setup process, everything you can drag and drop however you want. It's not as if they say, you must put this light here and you must turn this light here. It's all very, uh, very open and very tied to or not not tied to it's it's however you want to set up your setting and uh from the last thing i'll say about this is one of the most interesting things is that across the board people who have talked about this who've reacted to it say this is one of the most impressive things that i've seen since i've gone to ces the demos have been so impressive that like in their many years of going to ces this is the most impressive demo they've ever seen so the latency apparently is very low which he has always been very good about um but now like we're going to be living some very like your room becomes part of your screen that's going to be awesome well, in the yeah. age of VR, it makes sense to try and point. elevate the experiences that we're having outside of headsets, right? Because no one, no one really wants to at this point be strapped into a headset, even those of us who really like VR. Uh, so to have objects and smart um, and smart objects that augment your experience without necessarily forcing you into an unknown world, I think is is pretty cool. It's a good on you. I love their stuff. Yeah, me too. And uh, I, I love the updates that they're always issuing and the, the new products that they're always shipping. Um, it's one of the honestly one of the best things to buy into. Um, the other there are just two other things you can expect from them. Uh, they're going to have a new app that that's coming uh, later this year. And essentially, the main thing is that um, it's bringing back some old features that people really enjoyed, uh, including color pickers across like a whole room. And uh, last but not least are some outdoor ready bulbs made by Hue. So that's pretty exciting too. If you like to entertain outdoors or have like a patio set up, um, then these lights can be good for that. And also if you sort of are in an area maybe, or it doesn't matter where you live, but if you want to show like your home, even if you're not home, um, these outdoor lights can be good for that. So uh, stay tuned for Philips Hue to blow the socks off of uh, everybody with their <laughs> different lighting setups. Yeah. So um, I want to talk a little bit about uh, the weirder home kit uh, <laughs> items and smart home automation items. Uh, so Renee texted me the other day and went, I think I need a smart shower. And I go, what? <laughs> I don't even understand the concept of a smart shower. Okay, I turn it on early. And then I realized as I read up on it, oh, it's it's not just turning it on or off. It's actually adjusting temperature and like having presets. And having music being, and steam and steam. Uh, so there's so there's some some appeal there, but there's there are also other bathroom smart homes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Like, let's just go into this. Um, the, first of all, I think the one that Renee seemed to be uh, most jazzed about was uh, a company called, Mo well, it's Moen. Uh, and it's th their sort of uh, smart line is just you. Uh, so they're making a smart shower head um, that is going to offer home kit compatibility and basically what it does is it allows you to control you know your 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 temperature settings the the rate of of pour all that kind of jazz um sort of interesting but more interesting and this is another article that we'll share in the show notes is um well i should say more interesting in my opinion are the different products that kohler is coming out with uh the kohler connect line uh offers a whole shower setup um which again is going to include things like different shower heads, you know, placed on the wall that are spraying your body. You can change the steam settings. You can have certain music playing, different temperature settings, um, all whole sorts of things. They've also got, which I actually find really interesting for people who like to take baths, for people who like to sit in their own filth, um, what you can do <laughs> is, sorry, uh, did I say that? Yes, um, you can have the bath uh, fill up and at the right temperature 
and you know to whatever depth you want and then also it will drain on its own whenever you're done uh, so it's like this whole package that comes with the the faucet the drain and then the sort of brain behind it all um, then they're going to have a toilet seat and a toilet handle um, that sort of work together the toilet handle just works to where it's got a motion sensor built in and also a nightlight so you can wave your hand in front of it and never have to touch the toilet handle again you can if you want to it works both ways hard you know physically and, and non-physically but if you're you know you don't want to touch that dirty toilet handle then you don't have to uh, and then the toilet seat offers warming settings and also features night lights then and I'm saving the best for last so I'm trying to like get through these other ones first um, they have a mirror that I think is pretty neat because it has Alexa oh darn it I said the word A-L-E-X-A -E built into it never mind <laughs> uh, my spots back there like what you're talking to me um, it has A-L-E-X-A -E built, built into it and it comes with these lights and what's kind of cool is you can say yo buddy set up my I want to put on makeup and it'll have a different color temperature and brightness for putting on makeup for your hair for different settings that you want and you can use the mirror to control all of the other Kohler Connect products as well uh, so your mirror sort of can be the start to the day where you go in and you say good morning and then it turns on all the lights in your house and it tells you the weather and all that kind of jazz pretty neat now the piece de resistance is um, <laughs> I'm sorry, it's so ridiculous. Uh, Kohler announced a smart toilet uh, that features a foot warmer, a tushy warmer, uh, a bidet settings to spray your tush and also to clean out the bowl. Um, it has night lights in it. It has several other things, but the most important and most ridiculous feature is that it's a smart speaker. It is Bluetooth compatible and you could use your voice to control those things. It's ridiculous. I what part of it is a smart speaker. Right. Like where does the where do the speakers exist? Am I and underneath do they like are you yeah. sitting and as you're yeah as you're sitting on the toilet like it's playing music and you're sort of like oh my this is not good i i don't know where the speakers are i don't really want to know i'm afraid that if you sit on that thing it's going to like take off across the room it's horrifying and what's interesting to me is the way that they show it on the sh on the there's a video that plays and instead of showing well, this is this is bonkers too. It's closed up and it like notices that you're a human being as you approach it and it like folds out and opens up like, yes, I am going to eat you now. <laughs> oh god. No, thank you. Like, can you just not? Is what I'm thinking. But anyway, instead of showing someone sitting down to use the restroom, they're like, no, we're just gonna show you that it has this nice foot warmer setting. So the gal walks up to it with her pink slippers on and like gets her toes with a nice, nice warm breeze. And like, it's got a nightlight, <laughs> but it's also a toilet where you sit on this and it plays music while, I, like, I, like, let me just ask you, does, I, I would be very uncomfortable sitting on top of a device that's like playing a podcast while I'm, uh, Removing while I'm performing waste Believing removal yourself. rituals. Yeah. <laughs> there we let, go. let me give you a scenario under which a toilet that plays audio is good. Um, where I live, that it door never, right no. there <laughs> behind me, uh -huh. that's my bathroom. And it's a Jack and Jill bathroom. On the other side is another door that leads to my bedroom. And our rooms aren't that big. So the, the bed itself is maybe a total of seven feet from the toilet. So if you're sleeping while someone is using the bathroom, you can hear ah. everything. So if I were able to sit down and some nice pleasant music began to play, the noises that were coming out of my body would not be heard as much as the noises coming from the toilet. So there's there's a scenario under which um, music or something playing from your toilet is a good thing. I just thought of someone recording just like their voice saying, I'm not peeing, I'm not peeing, and it just plays over and over again while someone's using the restroom. That's pretty delightful. Well, there are a number of things that I suppose you can encompass in this smart home extravaganza. Micah, how much do all of these monstrosities cost? Is there pricing? <sighs> 
Unfortunately, Kohler has not announced pricing for most of these products yet. Um, there are some list prices like the the bathtub system with the drain and the, the faucet is going to their list price is like fifteen hundred dollars, um, but the toilet and different things like that do not have um, ship like they don't have ship dates or, or product releases. It's just like, hey, uh, the, which in the article that I wrote, uh, there's a link to get notified about any and all of these. You just put in your email and they'll let you know, like, okay, your toilet's ready now if you want to come buy it. Uh, which, <laughs> like, a listen, thousand dollar toilet with sweet rumor. It's gonna be like the cost of an OLED TV. Like, you have to know that's gonna be the case or more. If any listeners out there are seriously interested in purchasing this toilet, I have to know that you bought this toilet. Like, I just you have to tweet at us and let us know. Yeah, I totally bought the. I can't even think of what it's called. It's got a ridiculous name, but oh man, uh, quite quite fun, um, and certainly uh, is far more bizarre than many of the other home automation things that were announced. <laughs> I would definitely buy that toilet if I lived, if I owned my home. I might even try to talk my landlord into <laughs> buying this toilet. It's called I the Numi awesome. Intelligent Toilet. That's the name of it. The Numi Intelligence. Oh boy. Numi, like Numi, I need to use you now. Like I, that just, <laughs> I don't want my toilet to be sentient. That's horrible. I'm I'm all in on this. I would love Clearly. to have a smart toilet. Hell yeah. <laughs> so I think I think what we need to do is we need to open a boutique hotel that just deals in home kit products. Yes. yes. So you can go try them out and experience it and not have to spend all the money to go actually yes. buy it and put it in your house. That's such a smart idea. Yeah. I can uh, think there must be somebody in New York who wants to do this. <laughs> yeah, call us. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but before you do we should probably take a, a break to talk about our sponsor yeah. for the, today's show. Let me tell you all about our good friends at Thrifter. It's uh, thrifter.com. So it's, it's a new way to save money on everything from gadgets to home goods like smart toilets by shopping based on value instead of hype. That's the best thing about this. You're not looking at... Uh, some deals aren't actually deals. They they are have always been at that lower price, but everybody's like, yes, you're getting 50% off the list price is ridiculous. These deals are value-based. We sift through, they sift through the stuff and find the best possible values. If you sign up at thrifter.com, you're gonna get thoughtfully selected tech deals from places like Amazon and Best Buy and hopefully Kohler with the Numi toilet. I'm just gonna keep bringing that up uh, it, daily without all the fluff. It's all the stuff and none of the fluff as I've decided it should be their new tagline. Uh, let me go ahead and hop over to thrifter.com. I'm sure Lori's already been eyeballing it today and probably <laughs> bought several things. You got to save your money now, Lori, so you can get your Numi toilet. I know. That's uh, so true. I don't right need a now. car. I need a Numi toilet. <laughs> well, see, it could double as a car. I'm fairly certain that thing's going to have <laughs> wheels and just take off. Um, <laughs> speaking, speaking of smart toilets, uh, there's actually right now you can get a hundred dollar Lowe's gift card for $91. And I have to imagine that Lowe's is eventually going to be selling the new me toilet. So I think that, you know, if, if, if you want to go ahead and save up on Lowe's gift cards, just keep an eye on thrifter and you can just sort of buy them whenever they're on sale. And eventually you'll have the $25,000 required to buy this toilet. Uh, some other cool things that are on here include a nice makeup set. See, it's not just tech stuff that they they find. It's it's all sorts of deals across the whole web. And they have some, some things on sale starting at just three bucks. So pretty neat stuff here. And uh, last but not least, the one thing that I'm going to mention, um, my aunt, the last time I was visiting uh, my hometown, she showed me her uh, Funko Pop collection, and she has this like massive collection of all these different things. And sadly, in in my bank accounts uh, way, it got me into Funko Pop, and I've yet to to buy any. Um, but I keep eyeballing several, including the Golden Girls, all of the Golden Girls, and then the ones that they offer. Um, from a few of the other shows that I like. I'm so sad there's no Funko Pop, the office characters. Uh, but anywho, yeah, exactly. yeah exactly. If you're out there listening, please, for the love of God, Funko Pop uh, office, you will have all of my money. But the reason I'm bringing that up is because there's actually a Funko Pop box that usually costs 20, 
twenty dollars. I was going to say twenty seventeen, but that was the year last year. Uh, usually costs twenty dollars, and it's on sale for thirteen dollars. So you can get some cool Funko Pop action figures, um, plus loads of other deals. There's always something to find, something to uh, get over at Thrifter.com. So remember, if you go to Thrifter.com and sign up, you're going to get thoughtfully selected tech deals from Amazon and other places. It's all the stuff, none of the fluff. Thanks so much to Thrifter for sponsoring our show. Excellent. Thank you, Thrifter. All right. Uh, so let's uh, let's veer away from CES a little bit because otherwise Ooh. we'll spend the entire show talking about it. Um, let's uh, let's talk about some of the other things that happened in the tech world, including uh, the wireless charging wars are so over. So happy. <laughs> so happy about this so um so here's here's the thing the wireless charging the contact based charging wars are over <laughs> i have such a pet peeve with calling contact based chargers wireless chargers but that's a topic for another time uh yeah so um so um the wireless power consortium um has been pushing uh key Qi, Qi charging uh, for for a while now. And it's has quite a few major manufacturers on board, um, but not one of them. PowerMat was clinging to its own proprietary standard for uh, like quite a, a number sad, of years. Sad, sad, oh. sad, sad person. <laughs> yeah, Duracell. Uh, <laughs> however, as of this last week, uh, PowerMat has decided to join forces with the key charging consortium. So hopefully that means that power mats will be Qi capable in the future. There might still be, you know, some proprietary nonsense going on, but they'll also support Qi. So hopefully we won't have to, it won't be Blu-ray, you know, H, what was it? H, H, H DVD? Yeah, yeah, something like that. I couldn't remember. I, like, I, I can't remember. It's been dead. <laughs> I can remember v Yes versus beta, but not yeah. Blu-ray versus HDVD, which actually happened in my lifetime. Anyway, <laughs> you don't have to ever remember the name Power Mat, and we can just be like, yeah, honestly, let's hope we don't have to remember the name cheating either. Amen. Yeah. Good. Let's Good. let's hope we can get to the Tesla future. And I don't mean the company, folks. I mean Nikola Tesla, <laughs> where we have wireless, wireless charging. Truly wireless. I'm just walking around my house, be bopping along, and the green uh, charging icon is over my iPhone battery because my house has one of those cool generator things in the middle of it, right next to my other appliance. It's like right there next to the hot water heater and the the furnace, right in my little utility closet, just pumping out power that is not frying my brain or my dogs or anything like that, but it's keeping my phone nice and charged up. Someday. <laughs> Someday, Someday. You know One what? Day uh, more. In the home kit future, I also want that to be a, a light fixture for my dining room table. So <sighs> I think it'd just be cool. Yes. Oh, yes. The, see, that's so much better. Just like your table, your your table lamps, your floor lamps, and your your overhead lamps, and all those different things are the ones outputting the power. And frankly, why not add Wi-Fi to that as well? It's just like mm -hmm. all of the different wireless connectivity stuff just is part of the decor. I love whenever you can integrate products into your decor, which is why I do think that that uh, Nano Leaf thingy is cool uh, because it is so much so much like a, a a nice addition to the household it's not just um this black black box that you have to just set out somewhere and hope nobody uh looks at and says this does not match with everything else in your home <laughs> if do you, you want think, to be honest about remotes go ahead Lori. do you think that power mat gave in to to switching to chi standard because apple came out with iphone 10 I know this is like a weird thing to say because it's she's been around forever and um, Android devices have been using them for a really long time. But I, it is interesting that once Apple got on board with Qi that now suddenly the last holdout has decided to switch over. I think it's a straw that broke the camel's back. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, as opposed to some, you know, it's not like... Um, uh, let's see, what would the whale that broke the camel's back. It's straw that broke the camel's back and that this was, yeah, the last holdout. It's not as if once Apple, it, there are places sometimes where when once Apple says blank, then everybody says how high. I think this was just a situation where this really was like the last holdout. But more importantly, um, 
I had been keeping an eye on Power Mat for several years simply because uh, when they first announced their partnership with Starbucks so many years ago, I wrote the story about that for the company that I worked at before now. And so it was always interesting to me, like, how is that, you know, how's that doing? I haven't seen it in any of my local Starbucks. Where is that going? And so in keeping an eye on the company, their partnerships did not extend past Starbucks for years and years and years. Mm -hmm. And so on top of not having Apple on board, they also just did not have the support. Like they saw, Chi sort of went for the consumer and PowerMat was like, well, guess what? We're gonna go for airplanes, airplanes, no, airports and restaurants and, and coffee shops. And that's how we're gonna take over the world. But airports and coffee shops and uh, and restaurants were like, nah, we're not really interested in what you're selling. And so their partnership base didn't grow. And I think that's what sort of ended up resulting in, okay, we just need to, to finally uh, say, well, we're not, we're not going to be successful. We might as well join the, the wireless power consortium. Yeah. I think you're, you're right on the money there. Um, and it's just a, it's a win overall for the everyday user, because if we don't have to worry about whether or not my random wireless charger supports my random phone, uh, it's going to be a lot better for your, for your everyday life. Um, speaking of phones, did you know that there was an anniversary this week, guys? Happy anniversary. Happy Thank anniversary you. Oh, wait, no, not me. <laughs> the iPhone, right? Or yes. the announcement of the iPhone, right? Yeah. The iPhone. 11, yeah. 11 years ago today, Steve Jobs introduced the iPhone. Uh, and we'll have a link. Uh, Renee did an incredible history retrospective a few years back, kind of building up to the release of the iPhone and how it changed the, the smartphone industry, which is undisputed at this point. Um, and uh, I think it's especially kind of... Uh, it's memorable this year because we have the iPhone 10 now. Um, and it's really, it's really kind of crazy to go back and watch that demo, which I remember, you know, 11 years ago, watching that on like an early version of QuickTime player and just my jaw being like, that's not possible. <laughs> like, when is this coming out five years from now? Like me as a, as a tech advocate, I'm looking at this device and I'm saying they can't possibly sell this device. This device right. doesn't can't possibly work like that because every touch screen that we'd all used up to that point was resistive and not capacitive and didn't work very well and certainly didn't support multi-touch, you know, and looked like no other phone on the market. There was just a, there was a lot to, a lot of shock that came out of that, I think. I think the biggest difference that really threw people out of, out of whack with it is that there was no physical keyboard, which is crazy because today the the digital keyboard is so prominent and so common that it's rare to see somebody with a phone that does have a physical keyboard. Yeah, it's they were sort of the black, like Blackberry has that physical, how am I gonna do anything without a keyboard? What, is, how is this gonna work? And it wasn't shortly after the iPhone launch that uh, we started to see apps pop up on it as well. And that, I, I that, the, it and it in and of itself sort of changed the whole landscape. But then you add on to that uh, people making apps and the, you know, the the was it the the per I can't remember what what the term for it is, but like the perfect the sweet solution. solution. Sweet solution. Uh, it's like oh my gosh, I can put apps on this and I can change the way that the keyboard looks and works. It doesn't just have to be a QWERTY keyboard. It could be all these different things, and I think people's minds expanded. Like the Grinch on Christmas, <laughs> instead of their hearts expanding, their minds expanded three sizes that day. Yeah. Yeah. So, Lori, where were you when you watched this keynote? Did you watch this keynote? I didn't watch the keynote. So, I didn't jump on board with smartphones until 2008. That was my first my first smartphone and my first iPhone. In fact, um up until 2000 I think it was actually 2007 when I got my first um iPod. I was pretty anti um, smart devices, mobile devices. Um I thought they were ridiculous and unnecessary and a waste of technology. Why would you need this thing that holds 10,000 songs when you can carry around a big box of your CDs, you know? So I really wasn't on board right away with that. It wasn't, it was 2008 when I, when I first got on board with the iPhone. And um, so, yeah, I didn't watch it. I mean, I, I heard about it and I, and I immediately thought, well, that's, you know, who needs that? 
Nobody needs that. We have computers. What do we need that for? And which is so silly that uh, that it wasn't that long ago that I was poo pooing the idea of a smartphone. <laughs> yeah. What uh, about you, Micah? Well, I just did the math. <laughs> I was 14 years old. Um, <laughs> uh, 11 years ago, I was 14 years old, um, and I I did not know about the iPhone until after it was announced. Once it was announced, I remember my uncle telling me about the iPhone and being so excited about it. And he's actually the one that got me like interested in Apple products. Cause it's interesting. My, um, my dad was a, uh, computer, like he, he, he did it stuff and, uh, was big into Microsoft and big into windows and, uh, was because of that very much sort of, not big into Apple. And so I had like grown up with this weird bias that Apple was not this uh, great thing. And it wasn't until that point when my uncle was telling me about, you know, the iPhone and about Apple in general, and then like showing me his Mac and all this stuff that I was like, this is what I must have. Like, goodbye, Windows, please, for the love of God, I need Mac OS and iOS. Um, and then he he got the phone and he showed it to me. And I just remember holding it and like, just you know, being blown away by it essentially, and wishing that I could have it instead of him. Um, and so it was, yeah, it was like a again. My, I think my mind expanded three sizes that day as well, um, and opened me up to the world of Apple. So it was certainly, despite the fact that I wasn't watching the keynote itself, it was the jumping off point for me in getting into uh, Apple tech. Yeah, um, and as a longtime Apple, you know, Apple lover. Uh, to watch it i watched it i remember in my parents bedroom i was off on on vacation from college at the time and i'm just sitting on the bed watching this thing being like what <laughs> what what is this uh so if you want to experience a, a kind of a flashback from the past i do encourage uh checking out renee ritchie's retrospective as well as taking taking a glance at that original video because it really is it's, it's quite something to look back on um, we are almost out of time, uh, but before we do, we should probably talk about, um, a thing that just got placed in a software update and, uh, something that Apple's talking about placing in future software updates. Uh, so the first thing, um, the specter and meltdown insanity that <laughs> happened. Uh, Where we all melted the, down with it. Yeah, <laughs> we all did. Um, as, as it, more information is coming out, it looks like, Still pretty serious vulnerability, um, but at least on the Apple side, uh, it doesn't look super dangerous at this point. And Apple has released a, a fix for macOS High Sierra and Sierra um, and previous versions um, that do patch Safari and WebKit to mitigate the Spectre vulnerability. Uh, we still have to walk, worry about Meltdown. Um, when it comes to to the Mac, uh, but uh, you can read more about Renee's, uh, Renee kind of did a deep dive and analysis on what it actually means for Mac users. And I think that's uh, really key to, to read, but definitely install your Mac OS High Sierra pitch. Pitch <laughs> update. <laughs> it's very important uh, for for your Mac. Um, and, you know, not getting, not getting. Uh, but not your Apple Watch, because that's A-OK -okay in both cases. <laughs> your Apple Watch uh, is custom enough that uh it is not affected by any of these problems you wonder why that is um why uh like predictive predictive processing it just maybe that's why the apple watch was so slow at first because it just doesn't use uh it's like no 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 i'm not gonna guess what you're yeah. doing it, it is very i think that when it comes to the apple watch typically and i don't know if this went into it i'm just you know spaghetti projecting i guess spaghetti projecting not projecting <laughs> um with the Apple Watch, typically people like humans are lazy. They're not really like lifting up their their arm to just like blah blah blah. Let's see what happens. It's very deliberate. When you lift up your hand and like are going to your Apple Watch, you're going to specific things. There's a reason that you've done it. So maybe it doesn't need predictive text, uh, predictive stuff as much because it's more deliberate. Whereas our other devices, we could be doing one of a hundred things. Uh, at once, so it makes more sense to have those phantom trolleys running down those separate tracks on a quantum level. <laughs> yeah, um, and on a non-quantum computing level, 
Uh, Apple had a, a couple complaints from shareholders, um, specifically shareholders who work in education, asking Apple, what are you going to do about the fact that there are a ton of children who are addicted to your smartphones? And how is that going to go? When I originally read this complaint, I have to admit I was a bit blithe about it uh, because I, in my opinion, Apple already has you know, quite, quite solid parental controls features. Um, and also the shareholder, uh, shareholder requests can sometimes ridiculous. Uh, so I saw this and I'm like, well, it's not really ridiculous, but at the same time, you know, Apple doesn't really have an obligation to respond here. Um, they did in fact respond and they came out with a, a really lovely statement, basically saying that like we, like one of our top commitments is making sure that technology enriches your life and doesn't detract from your life. Um, and we are working on revised parental controls to uh, to make it even easier to set specific limitations on how much screen time your kid is using and what they're using that screen time for. Um, and it's, I don't know, it's just, for me, this kind of uh, this kind of statement is a reflection on what I think Apple really excels at as a company, which is the the human touch to its products. It's not just a nameless, faceless organization. Um, there, you know, it's a group of parents. It's a it's a group of engineers who understand the societal implications that they're that they're building. It's a it's an awkward. Um sort of subject matter I, I think I think what Apple came out their their statement that they came out with is really like a genuine evidence that they are listening and they do want to kind of you know help help educate us to how you know keeping our kids from being addicted to screens but it's like it's like we're trying to let technology babysit our children and we're not teaching them the tools. And I'm mm. saying this from someone who is not a parent. So I'm, you know, I'm out of line by even saying this at all. But my you first are thought out is, of order. <laughs> my first thought is if if your child is addicted to screens, you are the one who needs to do something about it. Uh, you you if you hand them your iPhone or if they're sitting in front of a computer and you're not regulating what they're doing that's the first step to teaching them how to not be addicted to screens. Mm -hmm. Not not Apple putting in more parental controls, it's parents being in control of what their children are doing. And again, I'm saying this as someone who is not a parent, so I have no right to say what I'm saying. <laughs> Well, I think you have a right, but also the it's it's important to acknowledge the caveat, right? Where, yes, I think that, uh, you know, par parenting is uh, rightfully, I think, um, it's a it's a very tough job, and people don't always give it the respect that uh, that you know it kind of deserves. But at the same time, you know, there are things that you can put into place as a parent to to help your kids stay on the right path of technology and not necessarily getting you know <laughs> getting completely addicted to screens. Um, and it's, it's just, a, it's a careful balance. So I appreciate that Apple is adding these these controls, adding extra controls and making it as easy as possible. Because I think that's the trick, right? Yes. Is that some parents, especially parents who are not technologically savvy, who grew up before the age of, you know, really omnipresent technology, it can be hard for them when their kids know more about the device than they do. Gosh knows, like my dad, I remember my dad trying to set parental controls, like early parental controls when I was still, you know, 11 or 12 uh, on my Macs. And I was able to, so, you know, I, I made a new user account. <laughs> like I knew the root password um, and and that kind of stuff. You know, I, I never used that necessarily for pure evil, but I know people, you know, I know, I know people who probably would, who probably would use that to, you know, stare at a screen for 12 hours. So I think when it comes down to it, uh, making those controls easy for parents to use and complicated for children to undo is probably the best, uh, the best course of action. Yeah, and earlier you said we were moving on from quantum computing, but really parenting is just as difficult as quantum computing, so there's not too much of a difference there. <laughs> it's a it's a whole different series of phantom trolley questions. <laughs> Which way is my child going to go? <laughs> out, of, out of the house and down the road, or are they going to stay in the house like I asked them to? <laughs> oh, dear. We may never know. 
All right. On that note, uh, thank you again for another great episode of the I More Show. Micah, if people want to read more about your thoughts on phantom trolleys or quantum computing <laughs> or chihuahuas on your nails or home kit stuff, uh, where can they find you? Well, you can find my work on iMore, of course. You can also find all the different things that I talk about uh, at www.chihuahua.coffee. That's C-H-I-H-U-A-H-U-A.coffee. has links to all the different things that I do uh, and all the different podcasts where I talk about all these different things as well. And Lori your opinion on and of course your wanton need for a smart toilet the moment i get a smart toilet you will read about it on imore i can't wait okay <laughs> and you will i can't probably, wait but i can't wait you will probably read my pooping tweets <laughs> <laughs> at alcoholic <laughs> so uh Oh go my ahead goodness! Follow me. <laughs> it has a microphone built in. Oh God! Wait, are you kidding? Does it really have a microphone? No, no I think if it did, where you oh could God. like, hey, S I R I, tweet. I'm currently <laughs> sitting on my new me smart toilet. I, Ooh, emoji. I, I'm sorry. I don't think I'll do that. I I like to joke, but I really don't think Bridge I can myself to do that. Poop emoji too far. <laughs> <laughs> oh, scatological humor. <laughs> You'll never yeah. be too old for it. No, no. And you can find me uh, when not making S-E-T-T-E-R-N and on imore.com where I am not testing smart toilets. I've been testing all manner of Bluetooth headphones, including the Beats X, which uh, recently made my top pick for best Apple Watch headphones. Sorry, AirPods. These are better. Um, and uh, all other kind of things on imore.com. So thanks, I'm more readers, I'm more listeners, I'm more video watchers. Uh, you can find us on the I'm More Show every week uh, where we're talking about all kinds of fun technology. And thank you to Thrifter for sponsoring today's show. Uh, we'll see you next week. And until then, take it easy. Bye. Bye. Uh -huh.